That being the case, the Honourable Mark Buttigieg in reply. Thank you, Chair. Look, the, the callousness of that response is breathtaking. Not one of the arguments were abutted. Let's look at what has happened after privatisation. I mean, you could understand, as my honourable colleague John Graham just outlined, you could maybe understand the justification for this sold entity if electricity prices have come down. Have they come down? No. We've seen an average of 20% for, for residential customers and about 30% for small businesses. Have we seen um, any, any extra revenue? No. Despite being a 49% shareholder, the government is getting, losing billions in foregone revenue. Uh, my honourable colleague, Fred Niles' contribution was correct. A minimum 3,570 was the number that he successfully amended to put a floor on what was deemed to be the safe employed number. This is now down to 2,700. And we don't need to look any further than the weeks upon weeks of time that it takes to restore supply these days for swathes of people in that supply area because Osgrid don't have the internal capacity to deal with it to the point where they've actually got to call the army out. So don't sit, and instead of coming to the lectern and criticising me for standing up for working people and the consumers of New South Wales, why don't you actually have a look at the arguments and try and rebut them on their merit? Uh, the Honourable Damien Tudor had made a contribution whereby he seemed to imply because they're not frontline workers, they're somehow of less value. What are the engineers and the clerical workers who provide the support, the backroom support, to make sure all those metres keep turning around, are they of somehow less value? Uh, is it, 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 we've got a situation here where the CEO, Gross, actually doesn't have the internal capacity to complete the work in accordance with the funding um, envelope that he gets from the Australian Energy Regulator because he just simply hasn't got enough staff. So what do they do? They take the lazy way out. In the only way to, to, to return uh, money to the shareholders and save costs is to simply cut jobs. Instead of perhaps looking forward and getting into that renewable market, which your own Minister for Energy is promoting uphill and down dale, a laudable objective which we support, Instead of looking to those future markets, installing battery and solar and trying to integrate the network so that you can move forward and create a new revenue stream, what do we do? Job cuts to the point where this entity can't even provide reliable electricity at affordable cost. Um, and to boot, going around and telling the people of New South Wales that you still have significant control and don't worry that we've sold it because we can step in and still manage it if we have to. Well, if ever there was a time to do it, this is the time to do it now. Prices are rising, reliability is down, and people are losing their jobs. Step in and tell this bloke to reverse the decision. It's not that hard. Okay.